do. Truly, it's religion. And so if you have served in the armed forces, or currently serving in the armed forces, would you please stand so we can honor you, please? Wednesday night, and I've got another shirt. 
from Trish and I from the bottom of my heart, we want to thank you as, as a church. Uh, we are very fortunate and blessed to be able to be serving as your pastor. And so I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. So with that done, now we can get into God's Word, okay? Uh, we have talked the last previous two weeks about um, Christian conduct. Christian conduct, and today we're, we're going to finish it up, Christian conduct, and then we'll jump into some other things in the coming weeks, but Christian conduct, you know, a lot of times I've been talking about how we as Christians should should not do certain things, you know, hey, you're a Christian, act like one, you know what I'm saying, uh, don't act like the rest of the world, and sometimes people in the world think that Christians have all these don't things, don't do this, don't do that, don't have any fun. And that's what they think. But I'm telling you, I love life and I have a blast. And some of the things that I do, uh, I think are funny. No one else does. <laughs> but it's great. So instead of finishing up on what we shouldn't be doing, today I'm going to be talking about the things that we should be doing. Because you might be sitting there today saying, well, Pastor, I don't do any things you told me not to do. You know, what well, well, we ended up last time on uh, should abstain from all appearances of evil, all <laughs> forms of evil. It doesn't mean just that if it is evil that you stay away from it. It just means the appearance. If it just thinks, if it just see, thinks like it possibly could be uh, a form of evil, stay away from it. Don't dilly dally in it. Get out of it. When in doubt, do without. Let the world know you're different. So today we're going to talk about the do's. The do's. Okay, the first thing. Show me them Bibles. Hold them up high. Oh yeah. This has got a I love seeing that. Let's open up the prayer and we'll jump right into God's word. Can we do that? Father God, we come to you today, first of all, just taking a moment to thank our veterans, those that are serving actively, and those who have served, and those who have given up the ultimate sacrifice of their life. Father, we know that when they uh, come back, the things they've seen in, in battle and war has changed them. And Father, we, we could not be here worshiping you freely if we didn't have them. And so we want to say thank you. Father, today as we open your word, as we look at Christian conduct, Father, we've been looking at, at, at your word on how we're supposed to live our life, the things that we shouldn't be doing and the things we should be doing, to bring honor to you, God, that we will tell the world that you are alive and we love you and therefore we live for you. Father, speak to us today. Enlighten us to what your word has to tell us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hey, let's start off with the first thing. The first thing today is Christians should rejoice in Christ. Amen. Christians should rejoice in Christ. And, and uh, you know, everybody kind of rejoices in their, in their own little way, but uh, let's look at what really rejoicing is. So let's take our Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, and verse 1, Okay. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Actually rejoicing in the Lord. 
mean, you come in here on Sunday, how many of you are thinking about other things? I mean, be honest, don't raise your hand. But think about to yourself, what are you thinking about right now? Is it the Lord? Is it worshiping the Lord, bowing before Him, bringing our hearts to Him? You know, because a lot of people say, well, I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I don't do it like they do it, but I do it my way. And, you know, you're not going to tell me I'm not rejoicing, Pastor. <laughs> I'm rejoicing. Can't you say it? Are you really rejoicing? Because really, down inside your heart, and you know those people that, uh, you know, they get really excited and you really can't tell the difference between if they're excited or mad. You know those people that's like, oh, I'm excited. This is wonderful. I'm mad. The same face all the time. And so and it's like, are you really rejoicing? You know in your heart if you're rejoicing. Acts, the disciples were looking to fire, figure out, okay, they were they were looking to see who the, the next disciples would take Judas' spot. In Acts chapter 1, verse 24, the, the disciples knew that the Lord knew the hearts of the individuals. And I can tell you too, that today, when you're sitting in here, I I Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I can promise you that the Lord knows your heart. Are you rejoicing in the Lord? Paul said, fine, brother. Rejoice in the Lord. Well, let's get some things to rejoice about. This, this is kind of shout out. All right, I'm with it. Some things that we should be rejoicing about. The, the things that we should be doing to, to rejoice. Takes away our sins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting started. Think about that just for a second. Takes away our sins. Let's take that a step further. You know the things that you couldn't believe that you did, that you did anyway, and it's like you can't even forgive yourself. That deepest, darkest secret that's hidden deep in your heart that no one else knows about, that you wish that you could kind of get rid of it, he takes that away. And praise God for that, amen. I, I tell you what, he takes that away. Doesn't just forgive you for it, but it's gone. Paid him for. How about that? How about this next one? We can rejoice in, in Christ because he saved us from death. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean that you're not going to die? Oh, your probably chances are if the Lord doesn't come back sooner or later and call us home in what we call the rapture, okay? He calls the church out. We're gone. If that doesn't happen soon, one day I will be breathing my last. And that death that he saved me from, I do not have to spend eternity out of the presence of God the moment that I breathe my last very breath. I'm in the presence of God. Amen. Rejoice in that. Uh-oh, I got more. Hold on. I got some more right here. How about this? Rejoice in the Lord because he gives you peace. Amen. Beyond all understanding. When life is all going crazy, you can say, He's got it. Amen. You know, I might have made some bad choices in the spot I'm in right now. I put myself in there, but if my Savior loves me. He's going to take care of my needs. He's going to give me peace about it. And I got peace about God. I'm your child. Hey, you're going to love me no matter what. Peace. We all, all understand. It's rejoice. Okay. We have, a, we have a Savior that's the very source of our joy. Joy. Real joy. That joy down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. Hey, guess what? Joy. The world right now, I'm telling you what, we got to have more, bigger, better, better. We got to have all that stuff, but they're losing joy. Hey. Christmas is just around the corner. Go ahead and get that child that favorite gift. I'm going to have it, Mama. I'm going to have it, Daddy. You gotta get that. It's the greatest thing. I'm going to have it. Give it to them 15 minutes later. They're like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> you know I'm right. Just 
in the box. The kids will love the box. Make a fort. It'll be okay. Hey, listen. The things in the world right now that bring joy to people will eventually diminish. But rejoice in the Lord that He gives you joy that you cannot lose. Shouldn't we act that way? Shouldn't we act that way? I mean, Christians, come on. We could be the most sour people that you've ever run across. I blast. You know I'm right. You come in here. How you doing? Oh, I'm really? How about a smile every once in a while? In the world today, a few more smiles will be a wonderful thing. Even in the church, we come into church and we can't smile. Karen, smiling's my favorite. Smile! How about a good conversation? You know, do you ever talk to someone's all gloom and doom all the time? Focus on the negative. Let's focus on the positive. I've got joy down in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. Yes. How to get there? Jesus put it there. Amen. Spell it. J O Y. Down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. My youth used to do that. We can do Y M C A. Why can't we do joy? <laughs> Possessions? Wrong. Hey, I found something. Uh, Todd, this week, I tell you what, the fires in California, did you hear about this? At one time, about the fires in California were built, burning a hundred yards a second. A football field in a second. Your possessions could be gone. Just like that. I'm rejoicing in my health. That was good. What are you guys? Hey, what are you laughing about? <laughs> got, yeah, thanks, Chris. We got joy. We got joy, Pastor. We're just rejoicing with you.
was singing that, getting my praise on. I had other people that thought I was nuts. And I was like, I don't know who I'm leave a legacy. I want my life to be about Jesus. It was an older idea the more I realized that. Because I was once one of those people who thought possessions gave it to me. I thought wealth gave it to me. Even thought health gave it to me. But Jesus gives me the joy. And because of him, I can rejoice in everything else in life because I have a positive outlook in life. Let's bring you joy. The second thing we should be doing Strive together for the faith. Strive together for the faith, Christians. I'll get there in a second. Philippians 1, 27. If you're in Philippians, mine's just on the other page. This is amazing right here. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so, what, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Amen. You ever been a part of a church that you didn't know what they stood for? Where's this church going? What are you guys really doing? I mean, what's it all about? What? You got you doing this over here? You got this going on over here? You got this? What? 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 What are you doing? You know, a confession is good for the soul, but bad for reputation. Um, my old pastor used to say, and I've always had this problem that my brain and mouth engage at different times. <laughs> Usually my mouth runs a whole lot faster than the brain. And I was sitting in a staff meeting at this, uh, <coughs> I'll just say, this place that I was working. And uh, the senior person, I was not a senior person, but the senior person said, you know, it just seems like we're kind of spinning our wheels. I got something to say about that. I said, um, in a staff meeting with other direct reports to the senior person, which I was not, I said this. I said, do you want to know? <laughs> I immediately went to the, the country accent. I have no idea why. Uh, I said, do you want to know what I think? That's just making the time to stop and think. <laughs> and I said this. I said, one of my favorite movies is Remember the Titans. And I said, there's a line in the movie, and I'm actually been saying this to this guy, and I said, one of my favorite lines in the movies is that attitude reflects leadership. Oh my God. <laughs> I no longer work there. Week, I 
opportunity in a break trailer of men, and they were talking about why do people pray to someone to get to heaven. I said, the Bible says that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you're not going through Jesus Christ, you ain't getting to heaven. We are a church for the unchurched, okay? And if I want you, we got a lot of people come here a lot and, you know, be a part of us. This is what we're about. Hey, we're for the unchurched. Now, here's the... Oh, <laughs> hey, if you're not sure what we're about, we're a Bible teaching, Bible preaching, Bible tune church. Look at verse 23. 
But only they kept hearing he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith which, the, which he once tried to destroy. And they were glorifying God because of me. Did you hear that? Hey, we don't know who that Paul is. I couldn't recommend him. I couldn't pick him out of a crowd. But the one thing I do know is that Paul, who was once against the people of Christ, that was abolished and thrown him in jail, possibly even persecuted to death, guess what? Now he's on our side. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? You're either with him or you're not. You're either a saint or you're an angel. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. All right, hold on. Stop right there. Pause for a second. Whoever believes that Christ is the Son of God is a Christ, okay? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. If you're here today, maybe you kind of want, hey, I don't know about this Jesus guy. And, you know, hey, if you are a believer that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're part of the family. So let's go on. And whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. Amen. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Overcome anything 
Some days it might be a little bit easier. Some days it's not. But there's a battle between you and the world. So, so here's, the, here's what I'm thinking. When you, when you are, are uh, in the world and, and you're out there living your life and you think that you cannot live the Christian walk because it's too burdensome, guess what? You're going to come. He who's living in you is greater than one. And you can overcome whatever is coming at you. You hear me? Yeah. So you think, hey, I can't be a Christian because I can't live that way. I can't, I can't follow the rules, the commandments. I can't do it. Guess what? He who's living in you did. So since he did, you can you overcome the world. You can overcome it. The world. You can live the life. <laughs> that sin, that temptation, that just keeps pointing at you, keep drawing you, say, I can't go by that, I can't go, I can't, I can't walk on it, I can't go up. That sin, it just, just, you just keep falling for it. It's like Satan knows your weakness, and he does, and he just keeps bringing it to you, so, Put it in front of Tony again. I'll put it in front of me. And I can't do it. I can't do it. I got to, I got to fall into temptation. Jesus is the other kind of the world. He didn't sin. He lived a sinless life. That means a whole lot. Don't let that just pass by. facing a battle right now. You're going through a hard time in life. Jesus is talking here. He says this. These things I have spoken to you so that in me, remember the deuce, do this, in him, you may have peace. In the world, in the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. Take courage. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Whose child are you? Christians. Christian conduct. It's not all about the don'ts. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Sometimes, and a lot of times, about the do's. Are you doing the do's that you should be doing? Do people know what you've got is through Jesus Christ and they want it? I don't know what it is about that person. I'll tell you what I want that. Whatever they got. They're always, they always seem to be in a good mood.
Maybe you're sitting here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And you're about to the point to give up. Life is just too, I can't take it anymore. I don't know how you're doing it on your own. I don't know how you're facing life on your own. I can tell you, to the biggest part of my life, Jesus was carrying me. He can carry you. In a few moments, we're going to give him an invitation. I'll invite you to just come forward and say, Pastor, I want to trust Jesus Christ. I want to be an overcomer. I want to have that in me. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Man, we'd love to have you be part of this church. Then you could say, hey, I go down to that church. You go down to Real Joy, that's a Bible teaching, Bible preaching, Bible total church. You're part of them? Yeah. We'd love to have you be part of this church. Let's come forward and say, Pastor, I'm going to join this church. On both of the cities, we'll walk you out of the room with somebody else and ask you some questions, thoughts, and paperwork. Show you what God's Word says. Let you make that decision. Maybe we'll come to all and pray. Maybe you're not doing so good on the don'ts and the do's. You need to do a little bit better. God, I've got to get back in track. I'm not doing very good. I kind of have my joy a little dim right now.